Cities97.com. Hey, it's Paul Fletcher, joined by a, a, a budding friend. Absolutely. We've, we've bonded on food, largely. Food, and drinks. Moscow music. Yep. Didn't Moscow make it Mule. to a wiffle ball tournament, but I will in the future. That's gonna, It sounds like it's going to expand All right. next year. Yeah, and we're talking about some other big things. I'm glad you brought that up because i got something else to tell you about. Uh, anyway, uh, it's, it's hockey's back. Uh, the Wild tonight in Colorado. We've got the home opener on Saturday. Uh, you wanted to come in, and I don't know if you guys know this, but it's the 15th year of the Wild. Can you come closer, camera? Hey, look at these donuts these are that they brought us. Donuts. That's X and V, which is 1 and a 5. That'd be 15 in the Roman times. We just use 1s and 5s these days, but I don't think 1 and 5. That would probably be tougher to do, and it wouldn't look quite as cool, I don't think. You know? Maybe yeah, no, I like the X and V. They actually have a cool either. logo that's got this year that where they have the... X turns into hockey sticks on each side yeah, for the yeah. 15th anniversary. It's pretty cool. Up on the big old, the big screen, yep. the giant screen. Yep. Um, uh, speaking of that, we got the Jumbotron last year, if you will, the, yep. the massive screen. This year we got new seats, right? So new butts seats. will be happy. Yep. Yeah. In fact, I, it was interesting you bring that up. We were sitting watching practice yesterday, and all of a sudden I thought, well, I said, this feels like a new seat. And one of the guys said, oh, yeah, they did redid all these seats there. It's noticeable. It's cleaned up a little bit. They have some new ribbon scoreboards in there too it's the you know the xl energy center is right up there with the, the best arenas in the nhl yeah, absolutely. and in terms of fan experience broadcasters comfort it really is a great place and the atmosphere in there is tough to top it's a it's one of the best spots and now i've had a few years to get to travel to all the other arenas in the league and i put the xl energy center up there right among the top who's where's the best I'm, i think i i can guess but well it, it, they're all different you know i mean it's there are some that are great in terms of that there are some that are better for sight lines. A lot of the Canadian arenas have these, they call them broadcast gondolas. So you go up to the top and then all of a sudden they have this catwalk that brings you right out over the ice. Wow. So you're basically, you're above the penalty box calling the game. Picture yourself hanging above the penalty box at about halfway up the second deck. And so you're, <laughs> you're right above the ice calling the game. So if you look behind you, you actually see like the fans in the upper deck, they watch the game underneath your gondola. Their, their sight line is like behind you and underneath you. So for sight lines... My palms are sweating right now thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, so I mean, Edmonton's that way, Calgary's that way, um, Vancouver's that way. The, so those are actually, for sight lines, those arenas are great. But you're squeezed into like a little closet. There's no restroom or anything there. So, you know, from that perspective, the XL Energy Center is better. We have a lot yeah. of space. It's it's the amenities up there are better. Uh, in terms of the atmosphere in the building, how about like a fan experience? If some if, if a wild fan was going to go on one hockey road trip this year, where should they go? Well, there's I'd, I'd give you two different takes on that. Number one, Chicago, the the atmosphere in the building is electric, yeah. and it's the fans are nuts, yeah. and they're they really are. Yeah, that would be fun. But if you go into the Canadian cities. It's a very different experience. You go to Calgary, every fan in the place wears red. And they they call it the Sea of Red and it's so it, it's a little bit different. And just being in the town all day, that's all they're talking about is the game that night. Yeah. In Calgary or Montreal or Toronto. I mean, those kind of cities, the the experience of being in those cities because of what hockey means to them would be worth the trip. But the actual like volume level in the arena Chicago's tough to top. And the, the national anthem guy. I actually posted on him. I got when I, I went like two years ago, I want to say. Uh, and I, I, he's I, really good. He's Jim Cornelius. Uh, yeah, he's, he's unbelievable. And the place just goes crazy. I yeah. mean, from the time he starts, they start roaring. Roaring, yeah. And by the time he gets to, and our flag was still there and points up at the crowd, the place or at the fan yeah. at the flag. I mean, and the the place explodes. Right. It's part of the experience there, and yeah. it's it really is something. Uh, so you guys have pregame tonight. You don't get the game because NBC stole it from you. Or they did. It's it's too bad. It, Jerks. Well. It, you have two things, right? I mean, you could be calling games for a team that doesn't matter, that right. gets poor ratings, and that NBC doesn't care about, and you do all 82. <laughs> or you have a team that is likely to head to the playoffs, that's got a full arena with great viewership, and they steal 11 games a year. Right. So it's I'll take that trade off, but it is disappointing. You're really ramped excited. Up, you're go. ramped yeah. up. You're ready to go. You've been waiting all training camp. And now tonight we have just a pre and post game show, which isn't nothing, but it's I'd much rather be doing the game. In well, how, how long is your pregame? Hour long, so we so start you can at put seven. Lots o'clock. of energy into that hour. Absolutely, right. and it'll be fun. I mean, 
Mike Greenlay, West Walls and Iron Studio. Kevin's in Denver. He, he's got some interviews with players and coaches that'll be in the pregame show tonight. And it is fun. I mean, you're still, it's an hour to get you ready for a, for the game in Denver. And then we'll be back right after the game. It's, it, it is, there's no question about it, though. It'd be better to be calling the game. Yeah. But if you can't do that, this is the next best thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you, you will be calling the home opener, right? Home that opener is, Saturday night. They can't take that one from they, you. They, 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 can't, they can't take both. They took the home <laughs> opener from us last year, which was opening night. Right. This year we get the home opener back against St. Louis. And kind of a fun way to start the season because you play – Two years ago, Colorado won the division. Right. Wild beat them in the first round of the playoffs. Last year, St. Louis won the division. Wild beat them in the first round of the playoffs. And those are the first two opponents this year, Colorado tonight and St. Louis Saturday. Good rivalries developing and and should be fun atmospheres in both buildings. We don't like to, I don't like to get two X's and O's uh, when I talk Good. hockey. That's... But, but, my take is we've got stability and goal. Yep. We've got arguably top five, top one of the best defense, of course, in the league. Yep. To me, for them to take the next step, there needs to be more goal scoring. Who do you think, give us three players to watch that maybe are going to take another step and maybe can give us the added goal scoring that we need. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's a little bit misleading because you're right, the goaltending stability is huge. Mm -hmm. From the time they got Dubnik last year to the end of the season, they were the best team in the league. The defensive core is elite. Awesome. Ryan Suter is now joined by, you know, a couple of years, I was talking to Ryan about this yesterday, Two years, three years ago, his first season here, when they made it into the playoffs, they started the first game against Chicago. He was the only defenseman who had ever played in a playoff game before. Oh, now you have like a defensive that. core that not only has been in the playoffs three years in a row, they've been in it together, and they've grown together. So the defensive core is going to be one of the league's elite. Scoring is a little different, and everybody has this perception that the Wild can't score. Right. The reality is last year they were fifth in the league in scoring at even strength. They're, they're deep. They okay. don't have the one guy who might score 50. They don't have an Alex Ovechkin type guy, but they got a whole bunch of guys capable of scoring. So I, I think the, the couple guys I'd look for to step up this year, number one is Jason Zucker. He scored 21 last year and did it. He did it in only 50 games. Right. So he was a, a pace for about 34 goals last year, and that was with only one power play goal. It was all done at even right. strength. That's right. It wasn't this year he's going to get more power play time. I think it's realistic to expect that Zucker, if, if he stays healthy all year, he's a mid-30s type goal scorer. 40 would be great. The Wild, I'm sure the Wild would take it. <laughs> I think Jason Pominville's got to get back to where Goes he back. has been throughout his career. Last year was a little bit of a down year for him in terms of goal scoring, and a little bit was just snake bitten. Some of it, too, I mean, his shot attempts were about where they've always been. He just didn't score at the same efficiency that he normally does. I think Pominville takes a step forward. And then I guess the third guy I would say maybe at a, a little bit lesser level is I think Matt Dumb is going to score. Mm. And, you know, you, some of the other forwards are going to – they'll have more goals than him. But when you can get scoring from a defenseman, it's a big boost. And last year – he joined the team the same day Dubnik did, came back from the minor leagues that same time. Right. And from there to the end, he scored seven yeah. goals in right. 40 games. So put him in there for the full 82, give him some power play time. And I think it's realistic that this guy as a defenseman could be a 12 to 15 goal guy, which would be a huge boost. So watch those three guys this year. I'm going to add in hashtag Nino Crush because that's my guy. I'm, I'm, I'm going with 30. Yeah, could be. He's, 25, 30. You know, he scored He's such a He stud. scored 21 last year. Uh, the, Nino the, the only thing that, and, and I, I believe Nino has a chance to be a, an elite goal scorer. Wicked wrister. He does, and he's great around the net. He's got to get more consistent in the offensive zone, I think. But the other thing is that last year his numbers were maybe a little misleading because early in the year he was scoring on like one out of every four shots, and that just doesn't happen. You, don't, you can't right. maintain that over the course of the year. So... It, Nino could have a very good year and score about the same as he did last year, True, and it wouldn't be a step back. It right. would, he could have the same kind of impact, and he's going to start the year on the second line with Zucker and Koivu, which you know this that could be a really good scoring line as a, like as a second line for the Wild. Uh, okay. Lastly, do you get into expect or uh, to uh, predictions? A little bit. Okay. So where do you got them? I think Minnesota finishes second to St. Louis in the division. I think St. Louis is still the team to beat in the Central. Why? But I think they're deeper than lost anybody. They Don't lost. have a goalie. Well, I'm not as sold that their goaltending is an issue. I, I, I think St. Right. Louis, to me, looks like the most complete team in the division. All right. I don't think the difference between St. Louis and Minnesota is very big. Right. As Minnesota proved last year when they knocked them out of the playoffs. 
I picked St. Louis to win the division. I think Minnesota finishes second, which gives them home ice in the playoffs for the first time in this this recent run here when they've been they've been in the postseason three years in a row, but they've always had to be on the road in the first round against the division champ. This year, I think they get home ice in the first round. I think Minnesota's got a shot. I, I think this team is as good as anybody in the West and as likely as anybody in the West to make a run to the Western Conference Final. I still, to me, Anaheim looks like the best team in the West. We'll find out. I, I think Minnesota's right there with those two teams. I think Minnesota, Anaheim, or St. Louis is the team that represents the West in the, in the Stanley Cup Final. Wow. All right. That's. I think that's actually pretty... Uh, I'll, I'll give you St. Louis. I, you're, and plus... You're the expert. That's why we brought uh, you in. That. I like so, both standards. I can't. That's just because Russo was busy, so that's why they call me the expert. Not true. You have donuts. That's Russo true. brings coffee. I don't drink coffee. So, uh, Anthony Opanta, in my opinion, not just saying this because you're here, it's the <laughs> truth, uh, the only reason to keep cable, Fox Sports North. You need to stop now.